Hey, this is Jussi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And because of this, I mostly cover REITs on this YouTube channel. However, lately, a lot of you have asked me to also discuss some of my non REIT investments. And so in today's video, I'm going to give you an update on my two largest dividend stock investments. But before I get into it, could you please let me know in the comment section of this video if you want me to produce more of this type of content or do you prefer me to just focus on REITs instead? And then secondly, if you want to support the channel, it would really help me a lot if you click the like button thank you so much in advance. So the first company that I'm going to discuss here is called Blue Owl Capital. Its ticker symbol is OWL. And I discussed this company on this YouTube channel about three months ago. Back then, its share price was about $13 per share. Today, it has already risen to about $18. My average cost base is about $10.50. And so this has already been a very successful investment. However, even at these levels, I think that it remains very attractive. And I don't plan to sell my position because I expect it to go a lot higher over the coming years. So in case you're not familiar with Blue Wall, this is an alternative asset manager just like Blackstone, Brookfield, KKR and many others. They provide asset management services for other investors and they earn a fee income in exchange of that. But I think that Blue Wall is uniquely attractive because of five main reasons. The first reason is that it focuses primarily on private credit investments which are today attracting a lot of capital because interest rates are historically high. We live in a very uncertain world and the stock market valuation is also historically expensive today. Then the second reason is that most of its capital is permanent, which means that its funds don't have a limited term. And so this greatly increases the quality of its earnings because its fee income is indefinite. It's never going to end. The third thing that causes Blue Wall to stand out in its pure group is that it's earning most of its income from asset management fees and not incentive fees, which are far less predictable. Then the fourth thing is that it's far smaller in size, which should allow it to grow at a faster pace over the coming years. And then the fifth and final thing that caused Blue Wall to stand out in its peer group is that its valuation is today still below average and that's despite enjoying more defensive cash flow and faster growth prospects. Even following its recent surge, it's today still priced at just around 20 times earnings compared to 25 to 30 times earnings for its larger peers like Blackstone. And the reason why its valuation multiple remains so reasonable today is because the surge in its share price has been met with a surge in its cash flow. Just recently, the company released its 2023 full year results and the company managed to grow its assets under management by 20% last year, its fee related income grew by 26% and it hiked its dividend by 29%. Moreover, this rapid growth is set to continue in the coming years because the company has raised a lot of capital that has not yet been deployed, so it's not earning any fee income yet. You can see that in the chart that I'll put on the screen right now. And, and so this is essentially a bank of growth that Blue Wall has already secured and as it now puts this capital to work, is going to increase its fee income. And so all in all, I think that Blue Wall is well positioned to keep growing its earnings by about 15 to 20% per year over the coming many years. And so when you take that into account, its current valuation remains very reasonable. The management has also guided to grow its dividend to $1 per share in 2025, and that will put its forward dividend yield at about 6%. And so here you need to ask yourself, how many companies do you really know that pay a 6% dividend yield, have 15 to 20% annual growth prospects, have a strong investment grade rated balance sheet, it has a triple B investment grade rating, low leverage and very defensive cash flow. I just don't know many and this is why I expect to keep Blue Oil as one of the largest positions in my dividend portfolio. By the way, if you want to access my entire dividend portfolio as well as my fixed income portfolio, you can join High Yield Investor for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. Then the second company that I want to discuss here is called Patria Investments. Its ticker symbol is PAX. Patria is also an asset manager and also recently released very strong results. But despite that, its share price has mostly stagnated. It initially surged when the results came out, but it has since then dipped back down. And so today it's still very attractively priced. As a reminder to those of you who are not familiar with the company, Patria is the biggest alternative asset manager of Latin America. Many like to call it the Blackstone of Latin America because of its large scale, strong reputation, strong historic returns. And Blackstone actually even used to own a stake in Patria. And so that essentially makes it the Blackstone of Latin America. And I think that Patria is going to be one of the best performing stocks in this sector over the coming decade because its valuation is one of the lowest and that's despite enjoying some of the best growth prospects. 
Today, there are three major tailwinds that should lead to growing capital allocations to Latin America over the coming years. The first tailwind is the growing geopolitical uncertainty. Russia has invaded Ukraine and destabilized Europe. China is threatening to invade Taiwan, and this is already destabilizing Asia as well. And then finally, there's also a big war happening in the Middle East at the moment. And so during times of war, Latin America has historically served as a safe haven. And already today, this is benefiting the continent. The second tailwind is the growing trend of nearshoring. During the pandemic, most companies learned that there are significant indirect costs to having big parts of your supply chain far away from your end consumer. Moreover, then Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine and China's support of Russia and its own threat towards Taiwan have reminded people that dictatorships really cannot be trusted. And so there's a growing divide now between democracies and dictatorships and Latin America is the winner here. Finally, the third tailwind that should lead to growing capital allocations to Latin America over the coming decade is that valuations remain relatively low compared to the US and other emerging markets today. And so there are a lot of opportunities, relatively little competition for these assets and so this should bode well for future returns. And so because of all these reasons I expect more and more investors to start allocating capital to Latin America over the coming years and as the leading asset manager I think that Patria is going to be able to capitalize on a lot of this growth. You may recall that in our last video, we shared this one slide from Patria that showed that they expected to roughly double their earnings between 2022 and 2025. Well, the company just released their full year results for 2023 and they are well on the way to achieve their target. The assets under management is now reaching 40 billion already. Moreover, on their conference calls, the management reaffirmed that they expect to reach their multi-year target by 2025. And so this is huge because it essentially means that the company will have doubled its earnings per share between 2022 and 2025, which is a really short period of time. Despite that, the share price of the company has done nothing over the past years. And as a result, it has become a lot cheaper than it used to be. Right now, the shares of the company are offering a roughly 7.5% dividend yield, which combined with its rapid growth prospects and some upside potential from repricing as eventually more and more investors discover this opportunity should lead to significant returns over the coming years. The final thing that I want to point out about Patria that I really like from the perspective of a REIT investor is that just recently they acquired the real estate division of Credit Suisse in Latin America. And so as a result of this, they've now become the leading REIT asset manager in the region. This shows you that they're really following the footsteps of Blackstone, which is the leading REIT manager in the US and it's earning significant fee income from this business. Patria is now replicating the same model in Latin America and I think they're going to have a lot of success with it. So these are among my two largest dividend stock investments, but there are many more similar positions in my portfolio. And if you want to access my entire holdings, you can join High Yield Investor for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. Just to clarify here, I have two newsletters. I have High Yield Landlord, which for focuses on all my REIT investments and then I have high yield investor which focuses on my stocks and bond investments. And so finally once more please let me know in the comment section of this video if you want to see more content like this in the future and also if you could please click the like button that really helped me a lot. Thank you very much and see you at my next one. Bye bye.